Connie and Ed Sumner are happily married and raising their young son Charlie. Their life seems perfect. Ed was supposed to take the son to school. It's very windy outside today, but Connie can't stay home as she needs to prepare for an auction. Barely catching the train, Connie was trying to hail a taxi in the city, but to no avail. The wind was knocking the woman off her feet. Suddenly Connie ran into a guy carrying books. The guy, with a French accent, helped Connie pick up her things and then tried to hail a taxi for her. However, the cars just kept passing by. Due to the fall, Connie hurt her knees. The guy offered her to come to his apartment for a band-aid. He promised he wouldn't do anything bad. For some reason the stranger immediately gained Connie's trust, and she went up to his apartment, which was cluttered with books. The guy told her he sells rare books. In the bathroom, Connie took a towel and tended to her wounds. Meanwhile the guy made tea. Connie remarked that his apartment was interesting, but in reality it's not his apartment, it belongs to a sculptor. Asking for permission to use the phone, Connie called Charlie to check on him. Finally the guy introduced himself. His name is Paul Martel, he's turning 28 soon. Before Connie left, Paul gave her a book as a memento. At home, Charlie was watching TV. He was being looked after by the nanny Gloria. Connie was tired but in good spirits. Soon Ed returned from work. Connie shared that today a nice guy helped her. In the evening in the bedroom, Ed was taking photos of his wife, telling her how beautiful she is. Despite the many years of marriage, the passion hasn't left their relationship. The next morning went on as usual. After seeing her son off to school, Connie took the book given by Paul. A calling card fell out of it. Later at the central station, Connie decided to call Paul, although she hesitated. Connie doesn't understand why she's doing this. At this moment, she was guided by incomprehensible feelings. Paul was very glad to hear Connie, who said she just wanted to thank him. When Paul invited Connie over for coffee, she was confused, but for some reason agreed. Connie came, and Paul told her about his passion for books. Strangely in this apartment, Connie felt cozy. Paul attracted her with his charisma, sense of humor and intellect. However, Connie realized she shouldn't be here and left. The whole remaining day, the woman couldn't stop thinking about Paul. Later, Connie went to her husband's workplace and presented him with a small gift, a new sweater. Subconsciously Connie feels guilty towards Ed, although she hasn't done anything wrong yet. When Ed asked Connie about her plans, she said she would be dealing with the auction, and her client supposedly would be Bob Gaylord. In the evening at home, Ed helped his wife clear the dirty dishes after dinner. Connie looked unusually pensive. Paul couldn't get out of her head. Unable to hold back, the next day Connie came to him again. Quiet romantic music was playing, and Paul invited Connie to dance. Unexpectedly Connie asked him how many girlfriends he had. Smiling Paul replied, only two. There was no point in denying the mutual attraction between them anymore. At some point, Connie said that she seemed to have made a mistake. It would be better if she left right now. But when Paul picked Connie up in his arms, she was already powerless to resist the feelings. Later on the train, remembering how passion arose between them, Connie was simultaneously crying and laughing. She knows her actions are unforgivable, and she hasn't yet decided what to do next. After work, Ed crossed paths with Bob Gaylord, who was puzzled when Ed mentioned the auction. Bob suggested that Connie might have been talking to his wife Maggie. That evening at home, Ed unexpectedly asked his wife if she loved him. Connie clearly didn't expect such a question but without hesitation told her husband that she loved him. Ed felt foolish. Taking one of the glass balls from their large collection, Connie pondered something. Soon there was a party to celebrate Charlie's birthday. Everyone had a great time. However, Ed doesn't know that secretly his wife constantly calls Paul and occasionally meets with him. Connie loves her husband, but her feelings for Paul are growing stronger. There's no turning back now. One day Paul invited Connie to a cafe. She was nervous, afraid that someone would see them together. However, Paul was very insistent. This guy drove Connie crazy, she was completely immersed in the whirlwind of these feelings. Of course living a double life was very difficult for Connie. The guilt towards the husband haunted her. The next morning, Ed suggested to his wife to have lunch together today, but she said she couldn't because she had an appointment with a masseur. Ed began to suspect something and called the beauty salon where his wife usually goes. However, there was no appointment for her today. Meanwhile, Connie was heading to her lover and couldn't stop smiling. Suddenly two old acquaintances approached her, Tracy and Sally. The women suggested Connie to have coffee together. She couldn't find reasons to refuse. In the cafe, the first thing Connie did was to call Paul and tell him about this unexpected situation. A few minutes later, Paul also arrived here. Under the pretext of washing her hands, Connie followed Paul to the restroom, where they surrendered to passion. Meanwhile, Tracy and Sally were discussing how over the years Connie hadn't changed, remaining just as slim and attractive. 
When Connie returned to the table, she looked disheveled. Tracy noticed that the handsome guy couldn't take his eyes off Connie. She just waved it off. The women started talking about marital infidelities and its consequences. Tracy shared that she had been in such a situation. If Tracy could turn back time, she would change everything. However, Connie can't bring herself to break up with Paul. Every time it gets harder for her to part with him, he's the first person she thinks about when she wakes up in the morning. Connie hates herself for it. Ed can't concentrate at work and snaps at his subordinates. The thought that his wife is unfaithful to him causes unbearable suffering to Ed. Later Ed met up with his old friend, a private detective and asked him to follow Connie. Today Connie was absent-minded and missed the food burning on the stove. During dinner, Ed announced that he was leaving for a business trip to Chicago tomorrow. Suddenly when the conversation turned to marriage, Charlie said he would never marry because all girls are the same. The next morning, Ed was getting ready to leave. Connie pretended to be asleep. In reality Ed is not concerned about work. He just wants to know what his wife is hiding. Wearing a beautiful dress and bold makeup, Connie met up with Paul. They no longer feared holding hands and walking down the street, unaware that they were being photographed. Connie was so engrossed with Paul that she forgot to pick up her son from school on time. There was a parking ticket on her car for illegal parking. After picking up the son from school, Connie cried and smoked a lot in the evening because Paul ignored her calls. Meeting with the private detective, Ed learned that his wife was unfaithful to him and almost every day she met with that guy. Ed had already guessed it, but before he tried to deceive himself to avoid seeing the obvious. Even while shopping at the supermarket, Connie cries. Eventually unable to bear it, she went to look for Paul, who still doesn't answer her calls. Seeing Paul flirting with some girl at the bookstore, Connie approached and caused a scene. Jealousy drove her crazy. As they walked to Paul's house, Connie demanded to know how many other girlfriends he had. Paul claimed that the girl was just a friend, nothing more. However, Connie no longer believes him, realizing she was foolish to let herself fall in love with him. Connie was about to leave, but Paul didn't let her go, and passion arose between them. Ed now knows Paul's address and wanders around beneath his windows. Paul has also noticed him but didn't pay much attention. Summoning his courage, Ed knocked on Paul's door and introduced himself as Connie's husband. Paul knew this conversation was inevitable, so he invited Ed in and offered him a drink. As Ed asked questions, Paul answered honestly. There was no point in hiding his affair with Connie anymore. Ed didn't like hearing that Paul and Connie sometimes talked about him, as well as the fact that she had long dreamed of moving to the city. But the most terrible thing was that Connie had given Paul the glass souvenir ball. It was once a gift from Ed to her. At that moment, Ed felt physically sick. He lost control and holding the glass ball in his hands, attacked Paul. The guy fell lifeless. Ed cried, unable to comprehend what had happened. Pulling himself together a bit, Ed tried to revive Paul, but there was nothing that could be done anymore. Ed was about to call the police but changed his mind at the last moment and began to remove evidence from the crime scene. Suddenly the answering machine turned on, and Ed heard Connie's voice, crying, telling Paul that it was over between them. Connie was tired of living in lies. Erasing all his fingerprints, Ed took the carpet. Before leaving, he deleted all the messages on the answering machine. Meanwhile, Connie was helping her son prepare for the school play. Ed was about to carry lifeless Paul out of the house, but the elevator jammed. Ed panicked, realizing he could get caught at any moment. In the end Ed had to get out of the elevator and pull his burden out himself. None of the passersby suspected anything when Ed put the carpet in the trunk of his car. While the school play was going on, Ed hurriedly cleaned himself up. He was late for the play. Connie immediately noticed the husband's nervous state, but he said everything was fine. Suddenly Connie took Ed's hand. He didn't even know what to feel at that moment. Nothing would ever be the same again. After the play, another driver accidentally crashed into Ed's car. The dent was minor, but now the trunk wouldn't close properly. The driver wanted to help, but Ed yelled at him and hurried away. At night when the wife fell asleep, Ed drove to the dump and left lifeless Paul there. After that, Ed went to the car wash to thoroughly clean his car. Will he get away with this crime? How will he live on? In the morning Connie made breakfast. Ed was so lost in thought that he wore different shoes. Conversely, Connie looked cheerful. But she became concerned when the husband asked if she liked it here and if she wanted to move. Ed is haunted by memories of his horrific act. Soon police officers visited the Summer household. Detective Dean asked Connie if she knew Paul Martell. Connie lied that she barely knew him. The police informed that Paul had disappeared, and his separate living wife didn't know where he was. It was an unpleasant surprise for Connie to find out that Paul was married. Without getting any useful information, the detectives left. Immediately after that, Connie threw away the book previously given to her by Paul. During the day at the pizzeria, when Charlie mentioned that police officers had been to their house today, 
Ed began to question his wife about the details. When asked why her phone number was listed in Paul's contacts, Connie couldn't answer. Soon many guests arrived at the Sumner house. Today is Thanksgiving Day. At the same time, workers at the dump discover the body. A week later, the police returned to the Sumner house and reported that Paul had perished. Barely holding back her emotions, Connie answered the detective's questions, telling a fabricated story about her acquaintance with Paul. Ed claimed he had never seen Paul. When the detective asked Connie if she had ever been in the area where Paul lived, she said no, but the police knew she was lying because four weeks ago she was issued a parking ticket for illegal parking. Connie changed her testimony, mentioning the meeting with her friends at the cafe. Only when she was alone did she let her emotions out. Connie was truly in love with Paul. After picking up clothes from the dry cleaners, Connie found an envelope in the husband's jacket containing photos of her and Paul together. That's how Connie realized that Ed was aware of her infidelity. At home, Connie tried to pretend that everything was normal. In the evening when guests arrived, someone noticed a collection of glass balls. One of it Connie had previously given to Paul, and now the ball somehow ended up back in their house. A terrifying realization came to Connie. She and Ed looked at each other, understanding everything without words. When the guests left late in the evening, Connie demanded that the husband tell her what he had done to Paul. Ed could no longer contain his emotions. He had given everything to his family, and his wife had destroyed it all for some boy. Now Ed hates Connie and wishes she were in Paul's shoes. Connie didn't want to believe that this was actually happening. All night long, the couple stayed awake and did not speak to each other. Charlie felt that something was wrong in their family. No matter how hard Connie pretended that everything was fine, the son understood everything. Life became like existence. In the morning, Connie looked through the family photo album while Ed played the piano with the son. When the spouses heard sirens of police cars outside, they tensed up. But this time the police didn't come to their house. In the glass ball, Connie found a romantic note from her husband and a family photograph. Ed wanted her to feel his love this way even many years later. Connie knows it's all her own fault. She has ruined everything they had. Later, Connie burned all the photos with Paul. If she could turn back time, she would never want to meet Paul. But the past cannot be changed. Now both Connie and Ed are frightened. He wants to surrender to the police voluntarily, while Connie believes they should just get through this. However, Ed knows he won't be able to live with this. For some time, the spouses tried to lead their usual life, realizing that it would soon end. One fatal mistake took everything away from them. One evening, Ed and his family headed to the police station. Charlie was asleep, and Connie told her husband that they could sell everything and disappear. They could buy a little house somewhere by the beach and start over. It would be great, but the reality is that sooner or later the truth will come out. Ed hugged the crying wife, comforting her. In the final scene, we see the car parked outside the police station. 